All right, so there's a couple things that we just want to go over before we can begin the march. And number one, thank you all for being here in support and solidarity with Freddie Gray in Baltimore. Um, and a couple things I really want you to think about when we're marching and we're making these demands. Number one, when we say no justice, no peace, what do we really mean when we say justice? What does justice mean to you? Because we know that the six cops were charged yesterday in the murder of Freddie Gray. But is that justice? No! Justice doesn't come after the fact. Justice is preventing these things from happening. Yes. Yeah. And so, will we even get a conviction? We don't know. And even if we do get a conviction, that's just a small form of justice, but we have a that's larger right. movement we're fighting against. Right. And so we need to keep this in mind. If we're talking about what really justice means, and everybody's a little bit scared about the whole idea of dismantling the police and dismantling the system, but when we think about the fact that we, black bodies are being murdered every 28 hours, if we say that this is the only way that works for us, then we're saying that we're complicit with the violence that's being in inflicted on these people. dismantling a larger system, a system of state-sanctioned violence in the form of police brutality, in the form of inadequate housing, and inadequate education, in all different forms. That's what we're saying we need to dismantle. It's this larger injustice against black people in this country. And so when you march today, I challenge you to think about what justice really means. And keep in mind, we know that the cops evolved from slave patrols historically, right? We know. We know that this system is an anti-black system. Yeah. And so when we talk about fixing the system, who are we fixing it for? Because the system is never going to work for black people that it was built against. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and so let's just think about those things when we talk about justice. And justice is a world that I envision where we don't have to wake up every morning knowing that another the black body was killed by the hands of police. And in being in solidarity with Baltimore, we're also in solidarity with all of the lives, the black lives lost across the United States, right? We know that that's happening here. Police, Providence police are racially profiling black and brown people in this city. Providence police are harassing us and brutalizing us daily. And I do think it's important that we come forward and we talk about these things and begin to envision, you know, transformative justice and alternative ways that we can seek justice as a community. Build something that is built by us and works for us. Yes! And so thinking about these things again when we march and thinking about the fact that we're in solidarity with the larger movement. We're in solidarity fighting against police brutality that's happening. We know every single day when we wake up, another life was lost. Right. And so also thinking about when we chant Black Lives Matter, we are bringing forward voices that are normally ignored, yeah. historically ignored, presently ignored. Yeah. And so to push back and tell us all lives matter and to also be complicit with this heteropatriarchal white supremacist yeah. society. Yeah. And so when we chant Black Lives Matter, we are telling you we know whose lives matter under this institutionalized yeah. system. Yeah. We know it's not black lives. And so we're fighting back and telling you black lives matter because we demand to be heard. We, we are here. We demand to listen to us. And so we ask that you stop ignoring and erasing black history and what's going on presently with black people. And we ask that when you say black lives matter, you include all the voices of black people. And I say this because yes, we're here with Freddie Gray in solidarity with Freddie Gray and Mike Brown and Eric Garner, but we're also here in solidarity with all the black women. Yes. Black we're here in solidarity with the black women, black queer and trans women, yes. black, black children, black non-gender conforming people. We're here in solidarity with all black lives. And black lives matter was was pinpointed by two black queer women. That's right. And so if we ignore all of these voices, then we're doing a disservice to this movement as a whole. Yeah. And so it's just important to please keep in mind that when we say Black Lives Matter, we're talking about centering and focusing the voices of all black lives. Yeah. 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 And so in thinking about this, thinking about centering and focusing the voices, particularly of black women who are especially being ignored, Obviously, we know mainstream media is only showing us what they want us to see. Yeah. Please be critical of what mainstream media is yes. showing you. Yes. But they're, they're feeding you messages that they want you to believe. And you have to be analytical and critical and really question.
question. Why they're showing us what they're showing us and why they're choosing these things. But it's because it's all part of a bigger purpose. We know mainstream media wasn't also wasn't built for black people. Okay? So make sure that you keep that in mind. And lastly, I would just like to end or begin the march with a black women's liberation demand, Ashtada Shakur. So I just ask that you demand with me. So number one, let's go. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to fight for freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Let's go, Providence. Let's go.